Did you know that the human gut is made up of over a hundred trillion bacteria? That's why in this video we're going to focus on why it's important to have both diversity and quantity of probiotics in your diet. How's it going guys? This is Chris with HealthyConsumer.com, back with another episode of TGIF, Talking Gut Immuno Fridays, where we talk about gut health, improving your immune system, all through lifestyle choices. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you never miss another video. If you're watching this video, it's very likely you've had experience with probiotics in one way or another. Maybe you buy a commercial probiotic in the form of a supplement, or maybe you take it through yogurt, or maybe you go through something like a natural fermentation like I've talked about in some of my other videos like kimchi, sauerkraut, those kind of things. Now what the media pushes a lot of is the number of bacteria that you'll see. So you'll see a value that says CFU, colony forming units. So you might have a probiotic that says 500 million CFUs or 1 billion CFUs. And the marketing is going more and more towards increasing these CFUs, which certainly has an importance because probiotics have to have a certain amount of live organisms present in order to get their benefit, much like an infection. So if you're exposed to a particular pathogen, let's just say a nasty strain of E. coli, for example. If you were exposed to a smaller dose of that, your body might be able to effectively mount a defense and kill it off before it's able to spread into infection. Now that makes sense, right? So probiotics theoretically could have the same type of effects. But what I really think is missing from the discussion is the diversity of species. So when you take a probiotic, let's say you're taking exclusively lactobacillus acidophilus. That's been shown that it's effective at treating gastric ulcers and also excessive diarrhea. But what about some of the other species of lactobacillus and of bifidobacterium and all these different things you don't necessarily need to know the names of, but you need to be aware that Sometimes we need different weapons to fight different opponents. That makes sense, right? We might need a sword for one enemy and we might need a spear to reach to another enemy. So some examples are Lactobacillus and Saccharomyces boulardii are, have strong evidence in the treatment of the duration of diarrhea. Whereas Bifidobacterium lactis and Streptococcus thermophilus has been shown to reduce the frequency of antibiotic associated diarrhea in infants. In other cases with probiotics like VSL number three, which is a mixture of several species of lactobacilli and also Bifidobacterium, there've been great results for those with irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease. So I have up on your screen now a table that shows different commercial probiotics and the microorganisms that are present in these. And, and I show you this not because I want you to memorize these or need to know all these, but to show that there are a lot of different products that are coming out on the market that target different bacteria for different clinical benefits. So for instance, ProBioTech can help with constipation, acute diarrhea, which this is a type of bifidobacterium. There's another one on here, Culturel. That's been shown to prevent rotavirus-related diarrhea in children. It may have some use in preventing atopic dermatitis in children with a high incidence of allergies. Another product on here, the Enterogemenia, has Bacillus clausi as a primary organism. And you can see here that that might help with Helicobacter pylori. So that's when you basically have a hole in your gut. So these are but just a few examples of how having diversity of microorganisms is just as important for having a complete immune system response to the different threats out there in the world. And what's the best way you can do that? Well, for one thing, try and get a variety of sources of probiotics in your diet, like sauerkraut, like kimchi, other fermented foods, beet kvass, or at the very least find a commercial probiotic that has several different strains of bacteria. It also helps to eat a whole foods based diet to reduce the fried foods, to reduce the processed foods. So you're feeding these bacteria that are beneficial to you. So they proliferate and reproduce instead of the ones that you don't want, like some of the harmful yeast or other pathogenic bacteria. So in summary, yes, the quantity of probiotics is important, but also the diversity is as well. This has been another episode of TGIF, Talking Gut Immuno Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you never miss another video. I look forward to seeing you guys next Friday.